Hello folks, welcome back to my kitchen. Emily here, your Harvest Market Dietitian, and I'm back with another recipe. And this one is EZ. So I don't know about you, but I need those recipes in my repertoire that are quick and easy and delicious. And this is one of them. It comes together so fast. We're utilizing some um, kind of convenience things to make it really, really speedy. So we're gonna be using some canned fire roasted tomatoes. Really, really good in this dish, by the way, um, as opposed to just regular diced tomatoes. And pre-cooked shredded chicken. So that is going to speed up the time super, super fast. Really the only chopping we're doing is this onion and garlic comes together so fast. These are my chicken tinga tacos. So tinga is typically a dish where you have like a shredded meat, and then kind of like a, a sauce, usually made with those um, chipotles in the um, adobo sauce. So we are using those. Um, I try not to make this dish too spicy because I know we all have different levels of um, heat that we can tolerate, right? So I like to make it really palatable to the majority of people. If you like it a little bit spicier, you can feel free to add some hot sauce to your tacos but as is, they aren't super spicy. Now, maybe a little bit more so than some of my other dishes, um, but it's more of like a warmth than an actual spiciness, and it's flavorful, which I love. Okay, so let's get started. Um, what are you gonna need? Only a few things, really. You're gonna need a cutting board and a knife, a can opener to open your diced tomatoes, um, your skillet. I do, um, suggest you have a lid for your skillet because we're gonna kind of um, let this simmer a little bit. And then just to serve, I'm gonna be using a slotted spoon because we're gonna be having some juice in the pan that I don't necessarily want on my tacos. So this comes in really good handy. Um, really good handy, is that even a thing? Anyway, okay, so we're gonna get started. Okay, so my skillet is preheating here. We're gonna go ahead and start by dicing up our onion. So again, this sauce that we're making is super simple. There's really not much to it. Um, if you wanted to add more veg to this, I think you really could. I think you could really amp up the veggies in this dish for sure. I'm just giving you kind of the base recipe. And then if you ever wanna make this again, which I highly suggest you do because it's so good and easy, um, you can always kind of throw some stuff in here. Um, you know, I'm thinking like mushroom, um, zucchini, bell pepper, even like finely minced cauliflower would be really good in this because it's just a really nice sauce um, that we're making to kind of simmer our, our chicken in. Okay, so dice this up and we just wanna get our onion starting to saute. I have a neutral oil that I'm gonna be adding to our preheated pan. So a nice dice, ooh, this onion's a little wonky. It just doesn't wanna cut for me this morning, or maybe that means my knife isn't sharp enough and it's time, time to sharpen. Okay, pan is preheated. Gonna add in that oil here. I want it to be um, nice and warm when the onion hits the pan. All right, so add that in. Beautiful. Get that going, let it saute. I'm just gonna stir it up a little bit. Excellent. All of our seasonings are in a wet seasoning and a dry seasoning. So we're gonna add those here in just a bit. I'm just gonna go ahead while I have my knife out, while I'm in the chopping mode, I'm gonna go ahead and do my garlic. So a lot of garlic in this, has to be a lot of garlic. If you're looking in your kit and you're like, holy smokes, that is way too much garlic for me, feel free to save a clove for later. Um, but in my opinion, this dish just tastes better with a lot of garlic. Every dish tastes better with a lot of garlic. But that's just me. So we're gonna give this a good mince. If you have like a garlic press or something that you wanna use to mince this up, you certainly can. But I like a good old fashioned knife. Give it a good mince. So we wanna saute those onions, you know, five to six minutes-ish until they're really nice and soft and translucent. So we're gonna let those go. I'm gonna continue mincing up my garlic and I will meet you right back here. 
Okay, folks, my onions have been sauteing and they smell so good. They are getting translucent, they're fragrant, they're even starting to like caramelize a little bit. I have a really nice steady sizzle going. We're at like a medium. Um, so I just have a nice consistent sizzle. That's what I want. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add all of our garlic um, and we're gonna cook this for about 30 seconds-ish. It doesn't need a lot of time. We, we don't want it to burn. So we're just gonna bring this in the pan with the onions. And remember, adjusting heat throughout cooking is necessary because when we add things to the pan, um, when things excrete more liquid, um, as the pan heats, we're gonna need to adjust. So keep an eye on it. It's, it's definitely a dynamic process. It's not stagnant. So I think that's one thing we need to keep in mind when cooking is that we really need to kind of pay attention um, and use our senses, right? So how does it look? How does it smell? How does it sound? Um, and adjust that temperature as necessary. So again, you don't have to set it to one temperature and then stay there. We need to adjust as needed. Okay, so next we're gonna go ahead and add all of our spices. And oh my gosh, are you ready for this? It's gonna smell so stinking good when we add these. So we're adding our dry herbs and spices to the hot pan without any liquid with some oil in there and that's gonna bloom these guys. And blooming is just a really fancy term for kind of um, awakening all of the herbs and spices. So um, we need to get all of that beautiful aroma out as much as we can. And this is what's gonna do it for us. So if we add it to um, our pan when we have more liquid in there, um, they're not going to be as flavorful. So this is how to get the most out of your dried herbs and spices. We're gonna stir that together. It's gonna smell so good right away. Let that cook for about 30 seconds. We just kind of want to let it sizzle. Let the heat and the oil just kind of activate everything. We have smoked paprika, delish, cumin. We have um, oregano in there. We have some salt and pepper. And I think that's it. I can't remember what else, but it's on your sheet. So. And if you're watching and you want the recipe, always remember you can email me and I will send you a copy of this recipe. Okay, so next we're gonna add in the wet ingredients. And we have two types of vinegar in here. We have a red wine vinegar and a white balsamic. I like to do part of each because red wine vinegar is kind of my go-to. It's really, really good. It tastes good in everything. White balsamic has a little bit of sweetness and that's going to counter the tomatoes that we're gonna add, the acidity of the tomatoes and just round it out. And we also have our pureed, ooh, listen to that. Our pureed chipotle. And that's gonna be where the flavor comes from. So we're gonna let that sizzle. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're gonna let that sizzle and heat it in the pan for just a minute, not even. Oh my gosh, this smells so good, you guys. Then we're gonna add in our pre-shredded chicken. So depending on your kit, you have either shredded chicken tenderloin or cubed um, chicken, just depending on what I could get um, from my vendor. But if you're making this at home, you could definitely use just a pre-cooked shredded chicken like um, rotisserie. Rotisserie is fabulous for this dish. Um, do you have to use pre-cooked? Absolutely not. You can put raw chicken in here, but this just speeds up the time a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, so we're gonna add this in here. And again, usually it's shredded um, chicken, but you can use any chicken, really. Cubed, whatever. Okay, in goes my chicken. In goes my whole can of fire roasted tomatoes. And we're gonna stir this all together. Make sure everything is really, really mixed. So if you're getting your chicken, um, and this my chicken comes in uh, frozen, and you can put it in here frozen for sure, and then it'll just thaw as it cooks. But again, it is fully cooked, so we're just gonna incorporate all this together really, really well. And then I'm going to just crank up the heat slightly, bring it to a nice saute, and then I'm gonna cover it. And I'm gonna let this simmer in here for maybe just about five to 10 minutes and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, we have been sauteing 
Woo, steam bath. This is what it's gonna look like here. Look at that, gorgeous. So now I like to take, I like to put the lid on because I want everything to really kind of simmer and saute in this beautiful sauce. Um, and then I like to take the lid off and let it, let some of this um, liquid cook off a little bit more. So just a note, these are gonna be messy, sloppy tacos and they're delicious. So um, again, the reason why I like to use a slotted spoon is just so I can leave any extra liquid in the pan, but just be aware um, that these are going to be super sloppy tacos and they're delicious because we have this beautiful tinga sauce um, in this skillet. So from here, really important step, you need to squeeze in your lime right before you're serving. So I'm gonna turn off the heat because this is done. Another thing to note, this tastes even better the next day. So if you wanna pre-make this um, and then cool it, stick in your fridge, eat it whenever, it's a lot better the next day because the flavors have really had time to meld. But again, you can have this on the dinner table in 20 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna turn off the heat. Again, I did forget a lime, but that is super important. You're gonna squeeze in your lime. I like to squeeze in um, just like half a lime for uh, a two person. This is a two person kit. Um, and then serve the rest with the tacos. So highly recommend that you do warm your tortillas. Um, in the microwave. Another thing I love to do, if you have a gas stove at home and you have open flame, I set these um, just over the burner, um, over a low heat and using tongs, I just flip them and they get kind of like um, fire, fire roasted um, tortillas as well. So yeah, they're really, really good. Um, so if you wanna do that, you can. If you have um, any of the optional add-ons like avocado or jalapeno slices or the cheese, you can add that on too. And feel free to add any of your own um, if you have like shredded lettuce or you want to put on some hot sauce or shredded um, cheddar cheese, whatever you want, you can definitely do that too. So I do recommend warming these. They taste a lot better when they're warmed um, and they mold a little bit better as well. Um, and so from here, all you have to do is divvy up your filling. So it is, um, the serving is about three tacos per person. They are kind of like a smaller, smaller taco. So I'm just going to do a scoop in each one. And of course, if you want to have some for leftovers, you can. So I'm just going to divide this up and then I'm only going to plate up three here and then save the rest. Um, and those would be for the other three. So these are your Tinga tacos. So delicious. I just want you to see that filling a little bit. It's beautiful. It is so beautiful. It comes together before your eyes. Again, feel free to top with things um, that you have at home if you want to add something to this. Yeah. Easy peasy chicken tinga tacos. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you all next time.